LeBron, at age 33, in his 15th season, is about to make his, or is about, yes, is going to his eighth straight Eastern Conference Finals, and as we all said a little bit earlier, probably going to his eighth straight NBA Finals. Of course. And Tiger Woods was asked about greatness of LeBron, and he had this to say. Being great is doing something that, you know, no one can do, but also what separates those people, it's just the duration. They're able to do it not just for one year or not just for one game, uh, not just for a little spell, is that they're able to do it for a number of years. And to dominate something is, is one thing. You know, every player out here can have one good week you know, and, and blow away the field. Okay, great. Now, can you do it for a month? Can you do it for a year? Now, do it for a decade. Uh, do it for a decade plus. And, you know, then, then they start separating, you know, what is truly great. So we had two guys that obviously experience greatness in their own professions right here. So I ask you guys, does true greatness require longevity or how what do you define as greatness in pro athletes uh i mean it depends on where you're viewing this question from from in my perspective because i think if you're in professional sports you're already one percent of the one percent um so it's 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 different it's you're great if you're in any kind of professional sport but to that next step i think i don't think longevity has anything to do with it for me because to me that's like it's like saying Gale Sayers wasn't great, right? right. Gale Sayers is one of the greatest, in my opinion, but he had, he had a short run because of injury. So it's like, I think it's what you do when you do it. I think longevity helps. I think longevity is in a testament to the athlete's durability. But I think if you have a great season, a great whatever, a great run, you were great for that amount of time. Gale, does greatness require longevity? Not greatness. Like, you know, being great is <clears throat> just who you were for no matter how many years. But when you're talking about Tiger Woods, Jordans, LeBron James, Brady's, those are considered the GOATs. Mm -hmm. See, the GOATs, they had luck on their side, didn't get injured. So their greatness got to last longer than someone else's. So right. if someone say, yo, was T-Mac great? Yes, T-Mac was great. T-Mac got injured cut his greatness off. Yeah. So all, all, all that's happening to the, the, the goats we're calling the goats is that the fact that they've lasted longer with luck, didn't get injured too bad, and that's what makes them the best of the best because they just got to do it for a longer yeah, period of time. Right. Yeah. I, th I think I uh, think our legends get romanticized in their head, especially over, over time. Like, like they were still competing with cats in their era, but it's just that they, they did it for a, such a long time that you forget that they were competing with guys you don't even remember. Anymore, yeah. Yeah. They were still competing. Like, <laughs> like LeBron James, like, <laughs> like he's out. He's gonna outlast. He's outlasting the players he came in with. Yeah, yeah. you know, you gotta remember he 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 was in the Shaq era, <laughs> right? The yeah. Tim Duncan, like he was the AIs, the T Max, the Vince Carter. The, he's went through those eras, going through the KD era, the the Curry era, like. I'm I'm pretty sure that him, Curry probably will retire before LeBron. That's not far fetched. Curry's thirty. LeBron's thirty three. <laughs> <laughs> and one's a freak of nature. One's regular yeah. regular guy. So you got you got. <laughs> I'm, I ain't gonna let you call him a man a regular guy. I'm just like he don't have no athletic ability. That's, that's, that's all I mean. That's so that's you got, a, I saw that on Twitter. That's that's somebody was someone trying to say Steph Curry ain't athletic. Listen, man, this that's just, just crazy. Got, that's just a tip of the iceberg. Yeah, he's don't, 20, you, 28 inch vertical. I mean, that's not athletic at all. You okay? You don't. I mean, that's not athletic in the NBA. You can't say he's not quick. <laughs> Here's funny. He doesn't even know what like yeah, deceptive. Yeah. <laughs> he's deceptively quick. That's insane. So like you got one who's gonna like LeBron's gonna last till he's 40. So if if Curry lasts till so he's 37, yeah, they both be retiring at the same time. Can I ask you two a real quick questions? <laughs> it's a hot take, man. But in y'all in y'all sports, y'all y'all's run was very much great. I talk to you all the time about your run. I feel like what you did, a lot of the point guards that we see there scoring first, they're fruit from your tree. Yeah, Ariel, yeah, when you came yeah. into the league, you dominated. You're the best running back in Houston Texans history. You had a great run there, especially if you undrafted, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, right? Do you guys ever get jealous to see a player have longevity and not have to go through injuries? Does that ever bother y'all? No, uh, it happens. Right. And, and that's, it, it, it happens. You know, it's unfortunate that some players, they're going to get cut short, right. you know, and, and that's just how the game was. Like my favorite player of all times, and no one can ever tell me nothing bad about him was Penny Hardaway. Right. And he got cut short, but you're not going to say at the time he wasn't better. Like 
He was my number one dude. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Yeah. Hall of Fame, not he's Hall of Fame in my in, in my book because I know what he was. He got injured and slowed him down. He's but at that right. moment, if you cut his career, he's Hall of Fame right there. Yeah. All right. So for both of you guys, LeBron obviously is on a much different level than everybody else. But what does it take? What kind of focus does it take? I should say to to maintain that kind of level of greatness because. Yo, I'm not going to name names, but you said, you know, off camera to us that there are guys that should have been a lot better than they were, but they okay. were either lazy or not focused and just didn't dedicate themselves the way they so, should have. So I look I'm at sure you saw that in the NFL. So too. I, yeah. I look at players like this. <clears throat> when you say somebody like, and people hate when I say it, but it's the way you look at it. You have every ten year players. You have every twenty year players, right? So every ten year players, they're like your Mayweather's, your Venus Williams, your Kobe Bryant's, your Jerry Rice's. They're above average, like physique, but they're workaholics. They're like machines. They're perfectionists, which makes them great. Then you have your Venus Williams, your Jordans. Like these guys are freak of natures, like God's gift freaks with the same work ethics. Right? That's what makes them the GOAT. Then you have people who who have the same athletic ability as the GOATs, but they don't have the work ethic. So they just get away with just being regular. They just want to, you know, they just want to be. So that's where your Mike Tyson's them fall in, you know, like your Vince Carter's, you. Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille, like a Cam Newton, if he doesn't jump up to a next level, you got these freak of natures who they just like, if they have, they, they just need that motor and, and that's, if you don't have that motor, you're you not going to You saw that in the league, too, yeah. where guys just didn't quite attain the levels that they probably, you thought they would have attained if they had been that right. focused. I think, I think you just have to, like, really care, right? And, like, what I mean by that is, like, you have to, like, really love what you do. And, like, af- I think after you get a certain amount of money and after you reach the goals that you reach, like, how much do I care about putting a ball through a hoop? You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's what it comes down to. Like, like, some, like LeBron, like, that's all he thinks about. Like, you can tell, I mean, not all he thinks, but, like, it's an important, like, my legacy is important to me. Like, I, I remember there was a point in my career where I was like, I really don't give a shit anymore about how I run away from men. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it just, it just, I didn't care at a certain point. I think when you reach that Hall of Fame status, like, those guys, that's all they lived for. And mm. I, think, I think you have to care. And I think at a certain point, like, when you have millions of dollars in the bank, and your family's secure, and you're like, I don't want to wake up and, and do this anymore. Yeah. I think it's an important fact. But it's also kind of like, is it frustrating or maybe demoralizing when you see guys that you know should have attained greatness and just don't put in that dedication and don't really, again, have that focus? So it's like, what are you, like, what are you doing? Some, I mean, from a fan perspective, you're just like, you could have had all these dollars, yeah, all this, exactly. you know, this legacy, yeah. Hall of Fame, yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's like, why wouldn't you go for it? I mean, I, I, it don't frustrate me because like, I, can't, I can't sit in another man's shoes. Like, if, if he's... If he's super content and happy, like with his life, like more power to you. Like you did, you came, saw, and conquered. Like I can't, I can't, I can't put my expectations on another man. So like, if you happy with your life, man? I'm happy with your life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it's like it's frustrating. Like if you're a fan, yeah, I, I understand if, the frustration. As a, as a fan standpoint, you you get frustrated because you're like, like what would Vince Carter had been if he put more energy in being like a Jordan, than him trying to stay in the league at 40. Right. Like, what, what was all this? You said that work ethic. What now. was the, this work ethic you have to stay, get in shit? What was that when you was jumping over everyone? He didn't need it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but see, and that was the, and that was the, that's the frustrating part. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. He was so God's gifted. That, I mean, his IQ of basketball, his, his, like he had every, he had every tool. Like, his, how he looked in the air, like if you wanted to say a perfect <laughs> jumper, yeah. how he looked and how he glided, like how he was just acrobatic. Like he made it look so easy that it was like, why are you not averaging 35, 40? Yeah. It, look, yeah. Why are you only averaging 24? You, he was content. Right. It, was, it was like, you know, like Russell is not content with what he's doing. Like if... If you if someone told Russell, hey Russell, you can average a quadruple double, you be the first person on a on a planet, the motherfucker is gonna go out there and try <laughs> to average a quadruple <laughs> double. Now he now you got this man just flying, just flying, trying to steal everything. Yeah. But that's where his mindset is. He wants to be the greatest at what he's doing. Right. And he's a freak of nature. Yeah. <laughs> and also again, you talk about, you know, just not being completely dedicated. He's still gonna be a Hall of Famer too. Oh, easily. Yeah. 
No, but he could have been all time great if he was really. But that's what I'm saying. Uh, a God's gift, like a God's gift, a, someone who is gifted is still going to be at the crop. He's going to still be in top five no matter yeah. what because that's what his gift was. Like he was just a God's gifted person. What makes him the one or number two in there is because they had the dedicate, they had the heart. They wanted to be great. Yeah. You know, so like, like Mike Tyson, he's still going to be top five. <laughs> no matter how, guys. I know, but if he would have stayed focused and say he wanted to be, the, if he had Mayweather's mentality, right. he would have been the baddest Easily. ever to do it. I, I think like, no question. Like Aaron said, it's the realest thing. If you get to a point where you wanted to achieve this goal and you're content, then, you know. Like, but, you like with, with, with Mayweather, I don't, it, it's, you know, like he's doing MMA, the MMA. MMA? Yeah, MMA. And someone said, would you put money on it? Yes. If that man decided he I would, no but I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I, I think about his machine work. He's Anybody. a workaholic. So you told us the time he was in a club, right? Yeah, I was in a club with him. I was in a club with him. He got his earphones, came in. This is Miami, probably about 2004. And they're jamming. Put, the, put it in. It was him. Left, right, right, right. Duck, left, right. He was listening to himself work out. That's <laughs> ridiculous. That's and Crazy, I'm right? sitting there li- like, like, I'm in here like, and he's training. That's he's crazy. in a club on a club, ex- you know, um, in- appearance. Yeah. Training himself, and I'm like, yo, that he's a machine. He's crazy. Like <laughs> well, this is yeah. sick. This is he's training himself. Yeah, I don't care about anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So if he's gonna jump into this ring, you know he put the dedication behind it Man, before he went. Yeah, that might have changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> TV. Yeah. TV. <laughs> he's not a man who's gonna jeopardize a loss. Like in his, he's not gonna jeopardize a loss. So I, if he decides to jump jump in that motherfucker. I he, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah he, he knows what he's doing. 